club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Some of the time we might do drawing and painting But most of the time we will do painting and drawing Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art club! Hi guys! Unfortunately today I can't make it into the art club studios so I'm gonna have to do this one via video conference from home. The good news is that I've spent the last week making a exact replica of the art club studios in my dining room so should we go and have a look and see what that looks like? Hopefully I'll be able to do the show from there and you won't notice any difference so let me just go downstairs quickly into my dining room. Oh it's all set up let me just shut the door behind me. Oh, shut that door. Camera's rolling. Okay. Uh, oh. I, mean, I mean, it looks, looks pretty, pretty accurate, accurate, doesn't it? it? Oh, Hold on, let's, let's shut this. this. Don't need that anymore, do we? What do you reckon? We could do it from here, couldn't we? Looks pretty similar. Hi, and welcome to episode 7 of Art Club. Thanks for coming back. Hopefully you enjoyed last episode. This one's gonna be a great one too. We've got the three Ps. We've got Picasso, pizza, and press subscribe if you haven't already. I'm gonna be displaying all of your wonderful pictures up here from last week. We had loads of great belly button fluffs. They were amazing. So much great pop art as well. I was really impressed. Talking of those belly button fluff drawings, do you remember I did my one and I did the competition where you could win my version of the belly button fluff? I've got it over here. Do you remember this one? He was off to Japan to go and live in a sumo wrestler's belly button. One of you will have won this and that lucky person or persons, your name will be coming up around about here. If that is you, have a look in the description to this video and it'll tell you what you need to do. What else? Oh, yeah, this week I was looking at this quite interesting article and they reckon that they can tell a bit about your personality just by looking at how you cut your sandwiches. I'll show you what I mean. I've got a copy of it here. interesting isn't it I don't know whether it's true or not but you never know uh, what else okay I want to say a huge huge thank you to everybody who has clicked subscribe uh, I think fingers crossed we've got up to 3,000 subscribers so if that is you if you are a subscriber give yourselves a pat on the back Give this video a like to let me know if you have subscribed and put in the comments there that you're a subscriber. That'd be great. I'll try and reply to as many as I can. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, thanks for sharing. Loads of you have told me that you've shared this with your school, which is brilliant because like I said before, I've heard a lot of schools have been setting, watching Olaf's Art Club as homework, which to be honest, is probably the easiest homework you could ever get. So if you want some nice, easy homework, share this with your teachers. And teachers, if you want some nice, easy homework to set to your kids, Make them watch this. What else is that? Oh yeah, send in your jokes. Make sure you click subscribe. And also have a look in the description to this video. And I've got a certificate for anyone who is a subscriber that you can print out. But as well as that, there are also these different achievements that you can unlock. And if you unlock them, you can color them in. So make sure you have a look in the description to this video to see that. It looks a bit like this. I think we're probably ready for another great art club. What do you reckon? Actually, before we go on, I've got a sandwich here I might have a quick bite of. So whilst I'm eating this, you can carry on with the rest of the show. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do art club. Mmm, that's a really tasty sandwich. I'll probably save this half. For a bit later, I don't want to ruin my appetite. We've now got the two part drawing that we always do and it's going to be a slice of pizza. Because I like pizza. I don't know if you like pizza or not, but it's going to be a slice of pizza. And all you'll need for this is a sheet of paper and something to draw with. I'm going to use this pen. 
quite a good pen this, I like it. It's like a brush tip, so you can kind of go thick or thin. Uh, you can use whatever you like, whatever you've got on you. You can use a pencil, uh, you can use a paintbrush, you could use a felt tip, you could use a squirrel dipped in Nutella, you could use a toothbrush, a toilet brush, a hairbrush, whatever you like. I'm gonna use this pen and this sheet of paper. And we're gonna start, because it's a slice of pizza, we're gonna start by drawing a triangle shape. I'll show you what I mean. It looks like this. Okay, so start sort of here. So a line going slightly up and slightly diagonal. And then this is gonna be the bottom of the pizza here. And we'll carry that on sort of to about there. It doesn't matter if you're like 100% accurate. This is a slice of pizza. This top edge is gonna be the crust. So we curve it a little bit there, do a little curve. And then this is gonna be a curve that goes round to here. And where the crust goes, we're gonna do a little line like this. Now this is gonna be the edge of the pizza, this side. So we're gonna do another curve, that goes like that. And then we're gonna do another line that follows that first line we did, all the way to the bottom. And that's your kind of basic pizza slice shape. But we're gonna give this pizza some character and a bit of personality. It's actually gonna be quite a super pizza. We're gonna do a dot for the eye here, and a dot for the eye here, a bit bigger. And we're gonna give it some eyebrows. They're gonna be kind of straight or slightly going down because he's gonna be quite a stern slice of pizza. So one, two, and I'm gonna give him a little nose. So I do my noses like this, but however you wanna do your nose, it really doesn't matter. And he's gonna be saying something a bit later on. So in the second part, we'll make him say something. Uh, so we'll give him a mouth. So, and a little M shape for the tongue, and then color that in. Now he will be wearing a T-shirt in the second part. So I'm gonna draw a line that goes here and here and here and here. And then anything above that line, you can put some toppings on the pizza. I really like a pepperoni, so I'm gonna do uh, a slice of pepperoni just there uh, with a couple of dots, because that's what pepperoni looks like. And perhaps I'll do another one just coming in there that's been cut in half with some dots coming in like so. Uh, and I might just, can I squeeze another one in? A little bit of one there. I might now get a smaller pen and just add a little bit of cheese texture. So just a couple of little bits of wobbly lines like this, that just make it look like there's some cheese on the pizza. There you go. Now that is the first part of our pizza drawing. Come back at the end of the show and we'll finish this off and you'll see what an amazing piece of pizza this is. call a magic dog a labracadabrador <laughs> and that joke has come from Ioni that was quite funny I suppose now if you were watching episode 6 last week you might remember we did a bit about shading Do you remember we coloured in the bouncing bum and we moved that torch around so the light was coming from different angles well we're going to do something now that's quite closely related to shading it's something called hatching get my pencil for this. What hatching is, is drawing lines to make things look a bit darker. Uh, the closer you put the lines together, the darker the thing becomes. So for example, if I was to draw a circle here and then another circle there, and I filled this one in with lines like this, and then I filled this one in with lines that are closer together like this. This one here looks slightly darker because the lines are closer together. That's hatching. Now, if you do lines going the other way as well, that is called cross hatching. And if you like, you can put lines going in the other directions as well. You can really make it darker if you want your shape to be even darker. Now that's just filling in a shape, but you can also use hatching to do some shading. So if you remember a few episodes ago, we did some 3D objects. What I'll do now is I'll draw a cube so that's basically drawing a rectangle that is kind of slanted a bit. 
and then drawing three diagonal lines that are all the same angle and all the same length and then joining them up. What I'm going to do is do some hatching on two sides and leave this one here empty. And on this side, I'm going to do some diagonal lines that are quite close together. And on this side, I'm going to do diagonal lines going in both directions and perhaps make them a bit closer together because I want this side to look a bit darker. I've not got my torch with me, but it's going to be like the light, I'll use this yellow pen, the light is coming from this way and this side is going to be the darkest side. If I wanted to make it even darker, I could do some lines going that way as well. And there's going to be a shadow coming off of this. And I'll do that shadow with some lines. And where the shadow touches the bottom of this shape, I'm going to do some other lines. And it just makes the shadow look like it's fading off as it goes away. If I draw another circle, you can also make your circle look like it's a sphere, like it's rounded. And the way you do that, is to draw some like curved shapes with hatching. We'll do one set of hatching like this. It's almost like a moon shape that you made. And then you do another set of hatching, perhaps in a different direction. And then you do another set of hatching, perhaps in another direction. Then you can do a last bit of hatching, perhaps we'll do a diagonally this way this time, just on the edge. And all of those lines together give the impression that your flat circle is now a bit rounded, like a sphere. And again, we can do a shadow underneath. The shadow underneath will be kind of coming out there. And so I'll draw some diagonal lines like so. And then I'll draw some diagonal lines going the other way. And that is a sphere with some shading. Actually, I know what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna do a quick cartoon using a bit of hatching. So this chicken is saying, look, it's hatching. And this one is going, of course it is, it's an egg. So why not try using some hatching in some of your artworks? Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. <laughs> and that joke has come from Naya. Okay, now it's time for our one minute artist bit. This week's artist is very famous and I like him because he wears stripes a lot. His name is Pablo Picasso. One minute artist, Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso was born in Spain in 1881 and is considered one of the 20th century's most influential artists. He's an abstract artist and also the co-founder of the Cubism art movement. Cubism is a style of art which tries to show all the possible viewpoints of a person or object at once. It's called Cubism because the artworks look like they're made out of cubes or other geometric shapes. This painting is called The Three Musicians. Pablo Picasso painted a lot of different portraits in the Cubism style. This one is called Weeping Woman and shows a lady who is crying into her handkerchief. Pablo Picasso's full name was Pablo Diego Jose Francisco de Paula Juan Nepomucina Maria de los Remedios Cipriano de la Santa Cima Trinidad Ruiz y Picasso. Guernica is the name of one of Picasso's largest and most famous paintings. It is nearly eight meters long and depicts the horror of the Spanish Civil War. And that is Picasso in a minute. Well, that was quite interesting and also educational. I thought what we could do is our own Picasso-inspired cubist self-portrait. Now you remember that we did a self-portrait a few weeks ago in the style of Paul Clay. Do you remember the one line, I'll pop it up there, the one line drawing of our face. Now we're gonna do a similar thing. So we draw our face, but this time we're gonna cut it up, stick it back together in a different order so it looks all weird and cubist. So first of all, we're gonna need a sheet of paper and then something to draw with. So I'm gonna use the pen that I used at the beginning of the show. And it's quite simple. You just draw your face. So if you've got a mirror or a mobile phone so you can look at yourself, that helps. Uh, I'm gonna do mine from memory because I know what I look like. <laughs> I'll do my nose here. Uh, 
and under my nose is a moustache. Hopefully none of you have got a moustache. A little smile. I'll do one eye there, one eye there. An eyebrow, eyebrow, and to my head. On top of my head, I've got some lines. <laughs> I'm also wearing a cap. Uh, do my beard, of course. I can't forget my beard. And do one ear here. Do my other ear here. Big old ears. Do some lines in my beard to give it a bit of texture. Do some lines in my moustache as well. Oh, and do a bit of my stripy top as well. Pablo Picasso would like that. So that's my basic portrait, and it doesn't matter if it doesn't look exactly like you because we're going to be cutting it up and sticking it back together. So that's what we do next. Grab your scissors, make sure you don't throw them or catch them or swallow them or anything else really stupid. Be sensible is what I'm saying. And all you need to do is just start chopping out the individual bits. So I'm going to chop out my stripy top, and again, you don't have to be really neat because and if you like you can chop that in half anything goes first rule of art club there are no rules uh, I'm gonna chop out the cap and I might chop out the peak of the cap You can get rid of bits that you don't need. Let's cut my beard out. So I'm doing this really quickly, but you can take your time over it. I'll snip that bit there. And that's got an ear on it, so we'll keep that ear. We'll get rid of that bit. And let's do the other ear while we're, while we're doing ears, we'll do the other one. Let's do the two bits of my moustache, let's chop them out. Let's cut out my nose. You can be quite rough with this. It really doesn't have to be super neat. Let's cut out my eyes. One. There's, oh no, I've not cut out the eyebrow with this one. I will cut the eyebrow out separately. Or I could leave the eyebrow there, but I might just do, just slice my face in half. I might slice my beard up a bit as well. Uh, and just do a weird shape like that. So we've got all of these bits. Now what we need to do is to stick them back down on another sheet of paper, but put them in a bit of a weird order. I think the trick to this is to make it kind of semi-recognizable, but at the same time, a little bit weird. So I've got my glue stick here, and I think I will start with my nose. that I shall pop my nose up. I'll pop my nose sort of there. I think this bit was some face. So I think a real good tip here is trying to get quite a bit of glue on there so the edges stick down. It just makes it a bit easier when you're colouring in. 
I think I'll put my other part of my face going up that way. Or that way, it doesn't matter. Beard. That one there. And then the other part of my beard, I think I'll just, what could I do? I could, I could have that coming over here. Got my cap here. I think I'll put part of my cap at the top where it should be. And then I'll put some stripes at the bottom here. Not the right way up, but it doesn't matter. That's the whole point of this. What I might do is just snip the peak of my cap in half. And put one half there. Let's put the other half below. One half there. What have we got left? We've got some ears and some eyes and some mustache. I know, this would be good. Let's put one ear there and the other ear on the same side. Just a bit lower down. Ooh, I've got some glue on that. There we go. And my eyes, you can see the gaps where the eyes have come from, but I'm not gonna put them back in those. I'll put one of them, I'll put one in my beard. The other one, I might there. What have we got left? Oh, it's my moustache, isn't it? I'll put, I might put one of them near my nose, so you can tell that that's what it is. And then I might put the other one under one of my eyes. Well, there's a, actually there's a really nice gap there, isn't there? Let me put it there. So that's it all stuck down. Now what you might like to do is get your pen that you did the drawing with and just add a few more lines or connect a few things up. Or if you've got some patterns, like the texture lines that I put in my beard or the stripes on my shirt, you can extend those or add them back in in other places. And once you're happy with how you've stuck things down, now you can color it in and you can color it in any colors you like. Your skin doesn't have to be the same color as your skin. Your eyes don't have to be the color that your eyes are and the stripes on your shirt or whatever your pattern is, they don't have to be the same color. So just go crazy. And there you go, your very own Pablo Picasso inspired cubist self portrait. I would love to see yours. If your mums and dads do take photos of them and share them with me, make sure they use the hashtag Olaf Art. And also, if they take a picture of you holding up your artwork, please make sure that you're wearing stripes. call a fish without any eyes. A fish. <laughs> and that joke has come from Connor. Well, there's a bit of a food theme going on in today's episode. We've got the pizza that we're going to finish off in a bit and we had my sandwich at the beginning of the show. Now, I'm going to do a ice cream picture now and I'm going to use a bit of hatching that we learned about earlier. So all you need is a bowl or something round to draw around and some paper and a pencil, which I've got here. And you go around your bowl. I've got a chip in my bowl just there. And this is gonna be an overhead view of your bowl and inside it, I'm gonna put some ice cream. I'm gonna start with the topping. Because you're looking down at this, you need to start with whatever is at the top. And I'm gonna have some cherries on top of my ice cream. You can do whatever you want, or you can copy mine, it's up to you. And now I'm gonna have three nice scoops of ice cream. So I'll have one there. Actually, before I do the next one, I might put a wafer in. So if I draw a line that kind of goes out towards the edge there, and then draw another one there, and then with a curved line, join those together, that kind of makes a wafer shape. 
and inside that draw another line. And actually the wafer kind of pattern is a bit like cross hatching. So we'll do this, two lines like this. So it's almost like some diagonal stripes. And then we go back the other way. Now I can do the other two scoops. Ooh, it's a bit of an odd shape. Doesn't matter if it's an odd shape, you just say it's melting. And I'm gonna have some chocolate sauce on mine. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna have a bit of kind of sauce going around the bottom here. Some of it is kind of dribbled off. I like to have sprinkles on my ice cream, so I'm gonna do lots of tiny little sprinkles as well. Here we go. And you can color these in lots of different colors. I might leave it at that actually. What I'm gonna do next is another edge on the inside of the first circle that we did, just to make it look like the edge of the bowl. And now what I'm gonna do is a bit of hatching that we did earlier to make the blobs of ice cream look a bit more rounded and to make those cherries on the top look a bit more rounded and to give a bit of shadow underneath the actual blobs of ice cream. So for example, let's start with the cherry first. If I hatch down one side like this, Let's go another direction. And I'll do the same with my big blobs of ice cream. So I'll go over the top of the chocolate sauce as well. Underneath all of the blobs. So this side of each blob. And then go back the other way. underneath these cherries, just where they're sat on top of the ice cream. And then the hatching that we did underneath the scoops, just make that go like that, the other way. And perhaps where the shadow underneath the scoop touches the scoop, we could go in a different direction again. Just do this a little bit, just to make it even darker where it just touches the scoops. On the bowl, I'm gonna do some hatching just this way. So it's like a curve, but going around that side. And go back the other way. And then underneath the bowl, I'm gonna do a bit of hatching outside of the circle. I think that's probably enough hatching. What I'm gonna do now is use my paints and start coloring it in. And there you have it, a really quick and easy ice cream painting using hatching to make the scoops of ice cream look a bit more realistic. You don't have to do ice cream, you can do whatever you like. It'd be great to see paintings of your favorite desserts. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club. Right, you might remember at the beginning of the show, we started to draw our slice of pizza and you might remember that I said he's not gonna be any old ordinary pizza, he's gonna be quite an interesting slice of pizza. Well, he's actually gonna be Captain Pepperoni, Hunger Avenger. I'm gonna turn my slice of pizza into a superhero and it's dead easy. Uh, all you need to do on that T-shirt of his is draw a letter and mine's gonna be the letter P for pepperoni, but if yours is a Hawaiian, it can be an H. If yours is a margarita, it can be an M. Whatever letter you want, whatever your superhero pizza is called. So I'm gonna do a quick P, not like that. And then he's gonna be flying through the air. So I'm gonna have one arm up, one arm back, draw some legs in and draw a cape, like all good superheroes. So the first arm is gonna start around here and it's gonna curve upwards like this. And then the next part is gonna curve up like that. And we're gonna draw the hand. So it's a line like that, a line like that. And this is gonna be the thumb. Just curves like this. 
another curve that goes there. And then we're going to draw his fingers, which are going to go like little kind of egg shapes. One, two, three. Oh, I'll give him one more, a little tiny one at the back there. And then we do a curve that goes like that to finish his hand. So that's one arm. Now the other arm is going to trail behind, so it's going to curve the other way. So it's going to kind of go like that, and then like that. And this hand is going to be a curve like this, curve like this. And then we do some little ridges. One, two, three, four. And then that one tucks behind like that. Next thing we're going to do are his legs. This one is going to bend like this, with a foot here, and it's going to join back in. And the next one is going to be a bit more straight back, so it's going to go like this. So it looks like he's leaping through the air. Now we're going to do the cape. The cape flows behind him, so it looks a bit like this. We'll start the cape going up. So, and then the other side going up and down to there. And then we do a bit of a wavy line. Like that. And then on the cape, we can do some lines like this. Kind of follow the flow. And because he's zooming through the air, you might want to do some zoom lines like this. Now, Captain Pepperoni is going to be saving the Earth from destruction and heading to Earth is a huge, giant, spicy meatball. We're going to draw that first here. And it's kind of this kind of shape. Almost looks like a meteor, but it's more of a meaty meteor, if you know what I mean. Give it some like texture like that so it, little curvy lines like this will make it look like it's a meatball and then because it's a spicy meatball we're gonna have some flames coming off it so we do flames like jagged shapes like this and then within that jagged shape you do a slightly smaller jagged flame shape and that's the spicy meatball and i'm gonna have it because he's going up to meet it i'm gonna have it kind of coming through the clouds so if I draw a cloud shape like this, and then another cloud shape like this, and another cloud shape like this, perhaps. So the meteor is just breaking through the clouds, and if you like, you can draw some actual individual clouds like this. And now I think I'm gonna have him saying something. So I'm gonna use my other pen to do the lettering. And he's gonna be saying, I am Captain Pepperoni, avenger of hunger and defender of the earth. I'm going to finish doing a few more clouds. Might even add a couple of birds as well, so we can see that we're really high up in the sky. And then I'm gonna color it in and I might use some hatching that we did earlier on. So keep an eye out for that. I'll probably do this in fast forward.
there you go. A slice of pepperoni pizza saving the earth from a giant spicy meatball. You don't have to have yours as a pepperoni pizza. You can have yours saying whatever you like as well. And it doesn't have to be a spicy meatball. You can be saving a cat from a tree or whatever you want your superhero pizza to be doing. If you would like to win my picture here, all you need to do is go to the comments of this video and type in the very special code phrase, my meatballs bring all the boys to the yard. Good luck and make sure you send in your pictures and you use the hashtag OlafArt. Well, unfortunately, that is it for another art club. Aww. But don't worry, there will be another one coming along next Monday, so make sure you do tune in. Now there's a few things that I need you to do for me. First of all, I would like you to share Art Club. So share it with your best friends, shout it out of your window, share it with people you don't know, tell them how great Art Club is. Also share it with your teachers because I've heard a lot of teachers are setting your art homework as watch Olaf's Art Club. So if you want to watch this Art Club as your homework, share it with your teachers. Uh, thirdly, make sure you click subscribe. I'd really love to get more and more subscribers. So if you haven't already, please do click subscribe. That would be great. Uh, send me your jokes. Love to read all of your jokes and we need some great jokes for next week. So send those. And lastly, if you are sending your pictures, get your mums and dads to send your pictures, make sure they use the hashtag Olaf Art. And we like Olaf Art because it has a hidden fart in it. Well, I think that's covered everything off. It is really time to say bye. And in the past, I've had some pretty stupid endings. I've had flowers thrown at me. I've had sausages thrown at me. We had the bouncing bum animation last week. You know what? For a change, I think it'd be nice to have a plain, simple, not silly at all, sensible ending. And with that in mind, I've been Olaf Falafel. I hope you've enjoyed today's art club. Bye. <laughs>